What's up my printer people? Welcome to this episode of Pimp My Printer. I heard you like fans, so last episode I put fans on your fans so you can help keep your printer even cooler. We ended up with six fans in total, but what's better than six fans? Eight fans? Ten fans? A hundred fans? How about zero fans? After all, the quietest fan is no fan at all. If we put big enough heat sinks on here, we won't even need fans. So let's check this thing out. I put a CPU heat sink on the hot end, as well as some LEDs to make this thing look as much like a UFO as possible. It's basically a V6 style hot end, except I made it out of a CPU heat sink in my backyard using a hand drill, which was pretty challenging. I replaced the main board with a Big Tree Tech SKR Mini. This will allow for the quietest stepper operation and enhanced cooling. I put heat sinks and a vapor chamber on the main board to help keep the stepper drivers cool. And while I was at it, I put a volcano hot end and a direct drive dual gear extruder on there, because why not? I'm using a titanium all metal heat break, so we'll see how that works out for us. And I got rid of that old dumpy power supply and replaced it with a 330 watt Dell laptop power supply. The best thing about this power supply is that it has no fan, so it fits right in with the rest of the build. fully installed. Wiring this up was actually really simple because I only have wires going to the hot end. The printer's been running for about an hour and it looks like I'm having some problems with the benchy. If I look at the heat sink it's running about 52 degrees Celsius which is pretty hot. Interesting so it looks like the heat sink is working a lot more effectively now that we're raised off of the heated build tray. The temperature has dropped to about 46 degrees Celsius. Looks pretty nice. I think part of the reason I couldn't get the bench to print is the heat sink is actually soaking up a lot of the heat from the heated bed when it's close to it like this. It's getting radiative and convective heat transfer. By the time it moves up off the build tray, it's got a little more distance there and it's able to cool more effectively. I just got these LED rings in the mail, and after you see this thing turned on, you're going to be super impressed with it. So here we go. So that's a ton of light. The middle button changes the speed of the pattern that's playing. If you press up or down, you change the effect. On the white LED setting, which draws the most power, it's actually running into the current limit at 5 amps. So this is over 25 watts of LED light, and it's incredibly bright. That loud fan noise is coming from my power supply. It's having trouble pushing all this current. But let's look at a few more settings before I show you how I'm gonna put this on the 3D printer. Wow. This little LED driver can also control strip lights. So I really wanna get a couple more of these to use on other projects. As cool as this thing is when it's all in one big circle like this, I want to break it into these smaller ring segments so that I can incorporate them onto my projects more easily. Installing the ring light was pretty simple. All I had to do is cut the ring so that it's more like a split ring. And this way I can take it on and off without having to disassemble the printer. If you're going to cut a slit in one of these rings, it's important to do it in just the right spot. If I cut it on the data input side, the data would come into this ring and start going this way and it'd get interrupted right there. But since I cut it on this side, the data comes in, it goes all the way around the circle, and then it reaches the end over here. So it's really important to know where you're cutting it so that you don't disable your whole ring light. And when it's all put together, I'm left with this mesmerizing RGB LED display. The way it bounces off the heatsink spins and mixes the colors looks really awesome. These LED lights don't help keep the heatsink cool, but they help it look cool, which is more important. Before I put this thing together for the last time, I'm going to upgrade the entire hot end to a new version. This hot end uses a cartridge style thermistor, which is much better than the glass bead style thermistor. Because, I don't know if you can see it, but on this glass bead style thermistor, it has little exposed wires down there. And those wires, if they make contact with the heater block, they can short out. And it can really cause some damage if 24 volts touches the heater block or the heat sink then it'll instantly short to this thermistor and blow up your microprocessor. 
And that means you'll have to buy a completely new mainboard. Ask me how I know. Also, I'll be using a 60 watt heater cartridge. Since I'm running at 19.5 volts, if we do the math, this 24 volt 60 watt heater cartridge has almost exactly 40 watts of output when I'm running out on 19.5 volts. So this means I'll have the exact same performance even though I'm running at a lower voltage. This is actually a really neat way to visualize the airflow and see how the heatsink is keeping things cool. There's a stream of smoke heading straight up and away from the heatsink. That's the natural convection in action. The Volcano Hot End is known for being able to increase printing speed and put down a lot more plastic, which makes you think that it's kind of a hotter device. But ironically, it's actually keeping the machine cooler because it has less top surface area. And that top surface area transfers heat directly into the heat sink. By having a smaller top surface area, the Volcano actually keeps things a little bit cooler. So let's get to the printing. We'll start with a 200% scale Benchy and then do some easier prints. I realized what the weak point is in terms of the silence of this machine. The spool is making too much noise. Way too loud. So I gotta print out a new spool holder that'll be a little bit quieter. Every time the filament rustles, it jumps up to 44 to 50 decibels. Let's jump back to thermal vision and see how our heat sink's doing. We're seeing you know, 34, 38 degrees, kind of the maximum temperature. So it's staying really cool. I have no doubts that this is performing just as well as the stock heater, except zero fan noise. If we look at the stepper drivers and the CPU and all that stuff, it's about 26 degrees Celsius. So no thermal problems there at all. And if we look on the back side, the vapor chamber is doing a wonderful job of keeping things cool. It's bringing that heat away from the motherboard so it can be dissipated with natural convection. Unfortunately, this is where the benchy starts to fall apart. It's not able to print this overhang on the bow of the ship because it's not able to cool it off enough. So it starts curling up and eventually it results in a failed print. Alright, I've seen enough here. I could let this finish producing a crappy benchy, but I think I'm going to end the test here and print something that's more representative of the kind of bland, functional designs that I normally produce. Just to give you a sense of how quiet this machine is, I've set it up with a window open in the background. I live in a typical residential neighborhood with cars driving around and birds chirping and stuff. And the window's about five meters away. The printer's about one meter away. So why don't you just take a listen and judge for yourself. I want to check out the thermal performance of this heat sink. Looking at the hottest areas of the heat sink, it's about 32 degrees. So it's extremely cool. In fact, these temperatures are lower than the stock heat sink. So we're not sacrificing any cooling performance by switching over to this fanless heat sink. That just has to do with how large it is and how much natural convection it can generate due to its size and the spacing of the fins. So. I don't know, I think this is a really cool mod. So what do you think of this hot end? Have I gone too far in the pursuit of silence? Let me know in the comments below. So overall, I think fanless 3D printers are pretty awesome. They have a number of advantages, including added safety, because you'll never have a meltdown due to a failed fan, reduced noise, and come on, this thing just looks awesome. So this is Nathan Builds Robots signing off, and I'll see you in the next episode.